Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Kendra Whitlock Ingram and I am the president and CEO of the Marcus Performing Arts Center. I'm thrilled to welcome you to our third annual Cesar Chavez celebration and our first virtual presentation of this exciting event. We're so pleased we could come to you in a virtual way, knowing we are unable to gather large assemblies in person at this time. The Marcus Center, we look forward to this event each year, which is a relatively new event and a great opportunity for Milwaukee area students to reflect on the legacy of Cesar Chavez. I'd like to take a moment to recognize the generous supporters of this event. Bader Philanthropies Inc., CBS 58, Telemundo, Wisconsin, the Milwaukee County Transit System, Educators Credit Union, and El Conquistador Latino newspaper. And now, please welcome our MCs for today's event from CBS 58 and Telemundo, Wisconsin, Miguel Ramirez, Natalie Shepard, Jessup Riesbeck, and Alexis Dominguez. Thank you and enjoy today's celebration. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 Cesar Chavez celebration. My name is Miguel Ramirez from Telemundo, Wisconsin. We have a great program in store for you this afternoon. On behalf of the 2021 Cesar E. Chavez Celebration Steering Committee, we thank you kindly for joining us today for this great event. Today marks a special day for a man whose tireless perseverance and commitment to fairness and justice for all people continues to inspire generations today. His life's work evoked a spirit of action and positive change. Today we wish to embody that same spirit that Cesar had in this program. Now we invite you to stand for a son American the Beautiful, performed by local artist Rana Roman. After that, please remain standing for the presentation of Color by the Wisconsin American GI Forum, Color Guard. Following the presentation of Colors, students from the Bruce Guadalupe Community School will lead us through the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies. For amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain, America. God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Oh, beautiful for a patriot's dream that sees beyond the years. Thine alabaster cities gleam undimmed by human tears. Amen. America, Dios derramó su gracia sobre ti y la corona de tu buena hermandad de costa.
gentlemen, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Present her! I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please welcome Jacobo Lobo, Managing Artistic Director with Latino Arts and Marcus Performing Arts Center board member to introduce the contest that include the pillar of community. Thank you for joining us for the third annual Cesar Chavez celebration. On behalf of the contest planning committee, I would like to express our gratitude to our community for helping honor Cesar Chavez and his legacy. We would also like to thank all the schools that participated and their administrators for their support all the amazing teachers that included learning about Cesar Chavez as part of their curriculum. Also, all the community volunteers who served as judges for this year's contest. And of course, we want to give the biggest thank you to all the amazing students that submitted essays, spoken word pieces, and artwork, making this year's participation our largest yet. This year's theme, Pillars of Community, was especially important as we reflect on all the challenges that the past year brought us. Our community has persevered through many challenges thanks to the amazing people that are pillars that we can lean on or uplift all of us and in many ways embody the core values that Cesar Chavez lived by and guided him to keep pushing forward in his mission. In this year's contest, we saw students illustrate their vision, reflect through essays and moving spoken word pieces about what pillars of community mean to them. And we can't help but feel optimistic and hopeful about the future of our community. Again, thank you students for your hard work and dedication. Keep working hard in school. Si se puede. Si se puede in community. Unity is important as part of the community. It is important for our community to continue to celebrate Cesar Chavez. He is someone that our youth can look up to as a tremendous role model of hard work and determination. As a leader on our national level, Cesar Chavez opened many doors that have benefited workers and communities of color. Now, we invite you to enjoy a short video about the life and legacy of Cesar Chavez. Enjoy. Cesar Chavez is a symbol of hope to millions of Americans. In 1962, he and few others set out to organize a union of farm workers. Nearly everyone told them it was impossible. With a rallying cry of Si se puede, they succeeded beyond anyone's expectations. Chavez saw injustice and hardship early in his life. His family was evicted from land they worked for nearly half a century. Leaving everything behind, his parents joined the migrant farm labor force. Chavez attended more than 36 schools before dropping out after eighth grade. He later joined the U.S. Navy in 1944 and served honorably. Upon his return home, he worked as a ranch hand in a labor yard and was eventually encouraged by Fred Ross to become a community organizer. Later, he and colleague Dolores Huerta co-founded what would become the United Farm Workers Union. His public relations approach to unionism and his aggressive but nonviolent tactics like marches, strikes, boycotts, and fasts made the farm workers' struggle a moral cause. It garnered popular support nationwide and caught the attention of leaders like Robert F. Kennedy, Jerry Brown, and Dr. Martin Luther King. 
Since Chavez's death in 1993, he has since become an icon for Hispanic empowerment, with the phrase, Si se puede, being adopted by causes setting out to improve the human condition. To honor Cesar Chavez comes with the obligation to recognize the struggle and deliver on his promise. And that is what his birthday celebration is all about. Thank you for joining us this year as we celebrated Cesar Chavez and his legacy. We can't wait to see you next year in person. So please remember to continue to wear your masks, practice social distancing, and wash your hands frequently. And if you are now eligible to be vaccinated, please do so, so that next year in 2022, we can gather again at the Marcus Center for the Performing Arts in person, together as community, and put that emphasis on unity, as it should be a big celebration of community together. And we continue to celebrate Cesar Chavez and his legacy. Thank you. Next, we would like to bring to the stage our officials with reflections. Si se puede. Today is time to celebrate the leadership, the life, and the legacy of Cesar Chavez. He is a national hero worthy of an appropriate public honor. Let us celebrate his legacy, which extends to workers' rights, civil rights, environmental justice, equality, peace, and nonviolence. We must follow in his footsteps. Chavez left a, a legacy as a collaborator, educator, environmentalist, and a civil rights leader. And his cause still lives on. We continue to find strength in what Cesar Chavez accomplished so many years ago. And we should honor him for what he's taught us about making us stronger as a community. Chavez movement was sustained by a generation of leaders and organizers who stood up and spoke out and urged others to do the same, to do what is right for our communities. Let us honor his memory, but most importantly, let us live up to his example. We must follow in Cesar Chavez's footsteps so we can all work together for a better life for all. At a time when workers are languishing uh, at a, with a minimum wage of $7.25 an hour, at a time when uh, workers are suffering without the correct uh, protocol and protective equipment uh, during this pandemic, this is a time to uplift and celebrate our great hero, Cesar Chavez, who fought for the dignity of every worker. This year's theme is unity, and it's never been more important for us to be united in addressing the significant challenges we face in Milwaukee and throughout our state. Let's continue working together. Let's make sure everyone, including our Hispanic Latinx community, has a fair shot at getting ahead. And let us provide a stronger way forward for everyone to succeed and realize their dreams. We must fight for fair wages and fair treatment for all people. We can come together, act boldly, and do things differently than we've ever done to help people who really need us. Cesar Chavez's work honored the universal humanity of all people, and he dedicated his life to strengthen our society and our nation. Chavez knew that one of the most patriotic things we can do is to see the humanity in one another and remember that improving the lives for those most marginalized and underserved makes life better for all of us. Today, there are millions of people inspired by the life and legacy of Cesar Chavez and who strive to walk in his footsteps. And I'm proud to count on our leaders right here in Milwaukee County as among them. Our organization is committed to building on Chavez's proud legacy and accomplishments by working to achieve racial equity and become the healthiest county in the state of Wisconsin. And we continue to be inspired and emboldened by the work of Cesar Chavez and we carry his fighting spirit with us as we work to create a more equitable and just county for all. We can honor Cesar Chavez every day by finding resilience, empathy, and hope in our communities and each other, by finding strength together to root out injustice wherever it hides and never give up in our fight for a more just and equitable society. The smallest acts often make the greatest difference and help honor the legacy of Cesar Chavez. Support those who need us most, care for your neighbor and community, and treat everyone with dignity and respect. Si se puede.
thank you to our officials. Now allow me to introduce to the stage Carly's Kelly with Panadanza as they perform Hola de Memorias, Wave of Memories. It's an exploration of embodied memory, celebrating and acknowledging the struggles and emotions one faces when migrating from place to place using the four elements of water, fire, earth, and wind as strengthening forces that lead the way through various life experiences. La tierra no sabe dónde un país empieza ni dónde otro termina. Ella solo sabe dar fruto a todo aquel quien la cuida. El aire es nuestro primer y último regalo en la vida. Soplándonos de un lado al otro, la brisa nos enseña cuándo sujetarnos fuerte y cuándo soltarnos y dejarnos llevar. El agua guarda las memorias y secretos como una abuela. En ella vemos el reflejo de nuestras virtudes y bondades. Como las olas venimos y regresamos en una búsqueda constante por la pureza y la paz. ¿Y qué decir del fuego, ese que sentimos en el vientre cuando algo está bien o cuando algo está mal? Aquel que nos guía de manera más sagrada a nuestra pura verdad. La realidad es que cuando inmigramos no trajimos mucho. Escuchamos estas poderosas fuerzas que nos guiaron. Tenemos en cuenta que no podemos cambiar el pasado, solo aceptar, adaptarnos y movernos en el presente. Empezamos ahora. ahora. Hola, 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 hola de la mar, mi santa se está quemando por falta de agua.
Wow, yeah, let's give uh, Carlise Kelly with Panadanza another round of applause. And now we will show the winners from this year's essay contest. Next coming to the stage is national performing artist Las Cafeteras. Las Cafeteras have taken the music scene by storm with their infectious live performances and have crossed musical genres and musical borders. Their electric sound and energy has taken them around the world, playing shows from Bonnaroo to the Hollywood Bowl, WOMAD New Zealand to Montreal Jazz and beyond. Let's give it up for Las Cafeteras.
What an awesome performance by national performing artist Las Cafeteras. Now we will see a gallery of the winning art from this year's art contest winners. How impressive was that? Well, thanks to the wonderful partnership between the Marcus Performing Arts Center and the Milwaukee County Transit System, this year's art contest winners pieces will be displayed on the bus shelters located on Cesar Chavez Drive on the corners of Greenfield and then the second one on National Avenue. Please take some time to experience our youth art displays. Let's welcome to the stage Brian Sarate, Brandon A. Gorton, and Brandon Sarate to perform in their award-winning entries for the Spoken Word Contest. My community, Lincoln Avenue Elementary School, Eagles of Lincoln Avenue, we are the community. We can do anything for anyone. We care for others. I feel happy helping our community and others. Together, we can make a change. Together, we can be better than ever. Like Cesar Chavez, believe together, si se puede. Lincoln Avenue of the Eagles, where we have vegetables gardens to feed our community. We clean the neighborhoods to live in a better place to call home and safe place to stay. Lincoln Avenue of the Eagles, where we have green program, programs like composting, recycling, and water barrels. Together, we can make the planet better than ever before. Yes, we can do this. We are in this together. Hello, my name is Brandon Gorton from Ronald Reagan High School. Under a temporary agricultural visa, Eduardo Reyes Trujillo went to Michigan to work in 2018. He came from an impoverished area of Mexico, where there were few job opportunities and low wages. First Hall Greenhouse, the company which Eduardo worked for in Michigan, promised much higher wages than he could ever make in Mexico. However, his dreams were crushed when he was tricked by his company into working for no pay. And when he complained, his company convinced immigration to deport him back to Mexico. No one deserves this type of treatment. Yet this is the same kind of treatment that Cesar Chavez fought against throughout his lifetime. In those days, migrant workers were not covered by the minimum wage law. 
so many of them were exploited and not compensated for the hard labor they performed. Cesar Chavez saw this injustice and used his life savings to start a labor union for migrant workers. Chavez used nonviolent methods to improve the wages and worker conditions of migrant workers. Chavez once said, What we do know absolutely is that human lives are worth more than grapes. An innocent looking grapes on the table made its highs poisonous residues hidden deep where washing cannot reach. While conditions have certainly improved for migrant workers, we must do better. The federal minimum wage is only $7.50 per hour. These workers are the backbone of their industry and deserve to be fairly compensated. To make America more equitable and to build a better community, we must pay all workers enough money so that they can afford basic human needs like food, water, and shelter. If we come together as a community, we can raise the minimum wage to $15 and help thousands make a living wage. We must also stand for better working conditions so that no one's rights are violated in the workplace. Like Cesar Chavez once said, it is possible for you to feel discouraged about all the injustice you see everywhere. But God did not promise us that the world would be humane and just. He gives us the gift of life and allows us to choose the way we use our limited time on Earth. It is an awesome opportunity. Community, your family, friends, church, neighbors, family, or team. Being together with the ones you know. Community makes a difference. Together we can make a change for the better. Together we can make a change for the community. Together we can fight against injustice. Together si se puede. Lincoln Avenue School made our roads safer. Lincoln Avenue School recycles, plants, gardens, and compost. That is our community. Together we are stronger. Together si se puede. Congratulations to all spoken word winners. We hope you're enjoying the program so far. We have much more in store for you. Now coming to the stage is Cecilio Negron Jr., born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who comes from a family of musicians and performers of Puerto Rican descent, whose lineage can be traced to Africa and Spain. He's a recording artist with more than 12 albums. Here to perform for you today, let's give it up to Cecilio Cilo Negron Jr.
Wow, what a performance by Cecilio Negron Jr. Now, please welcome to the stage community leaders as they provide reflections. What can we do to honor uh, Cesar Chavez? Well, the first thing I think that we need to have a little bit of a background of, uh, of what he did. He was not only a labor leader, but before uh, he organized the National Farm Work Association, he worked in Los Angeles in voter education and voter registration. Before he joined the uh, uh, Agricultural Workers Organizing Committee, or that is the Filipino-led uh, uh, grape strike, he had established uh, health services, he had uh, established a credit union, he had established other social services. So what, we, what can we do? We can do like uh, Cesar Chavez and uh, make sure that our community has all the appropriate uh, services, that it has a sustainable community. And I think uh, United Community Center is uh, very uh, uh, knowledgeable and uh, very committed to that kind of uh, activity. So uh, what can we do to honor Cesar Chavez? First of all, look at the most vulnerable members of our community. I think that that's what Cesar Chavez did when he uh, organized the uh, farm, seasonal farm workers in, uh, in California. And who are the most uh, vulnerable workers? They're the uh, uh, undocumented. Uh, for instance, right now, uh, uh, we can honor Cesar Chavez by being concerned about the status of those workers uh, uh, during the pandemic. Uh, uh, there have been a number of uh, community-based organizations that have advocated uh, for uh, the implementation of the safety guidelines uh, where those individuals are presently working. There's been lawsuits that have been instituted. There's actually been uh, 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 individual companies that have had to pay fines for violating uh, OSHA, or that is the uh, safety rules. What can we do? Well, as a community, uh, as a community center uh, uh, committed to uh, uh, early education, we need to continue to commit to uh, bilingual education for our children. We have to end those days, like in my generation, where the first day of school, we were confronted that uh, people didn't know our language and we didn't know English. Uh, 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 and that was one of the reasons why in our generation, we had so few uh, uh, young men and women uh, who were able to get a, uh, a good education. What can we do to honor uh, 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 Cesar Chavez? Uh, we can uh, make sure that our community is represented by uh, uh, politicians, by elected officials that care about uh, uh, the concerns that we have uh, uh, in our community, and that, that is, like Cesar Chavez did before he organized the union, we can honor Cesar by making sure that all adult members that are able to uh, register and uh, participate in the, in the political process here in this, uh, in this elections coming up right in the middle of the absentee ballot and the spring elections come in this, uh, this next year. What can we do to honor uh, 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 Cesar Chavez? We can continue to uh, honor the, uh, the individuals who uh, cannot help themselves, the individuals that need the assistance, that need uh, 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 us to advocate on their behalf, whether it's because of uh, their Spanish dominant, they don't have the skills and they need to uh, be able to provide for the families and, and uh, make sure that they get the uh, adequate employment and training programs so that they can have a, uh, a, uh, a contributing life here in our community. Cesar Chavez advocated to ensure the hardworking members of our community had equal rights. To honor his legacy, we should continue to advocate to open doors for our youth and all community members so they too can achieve their dreams. Just as Chavez never gave up, the United Community Center has remained a constant champion for the community throughout the past 50 years. To honor his legacy means coming together and empowering our community. We must continue to advocate for high quality education, for economic freedom, and for a healthy community. UCC is proud to honor Cesar Chavez through our determination of advocating for our community so everyone has the opportunity for the best life possible. Cesar Chavez was a great man. He was a leader and a mentor, an activist and a fighter for human rights. In response to the question, how can we as a community honor Cesar Chavez? I offer two words, it's time. It's time to advocate for a National Day of Recognition for Cesar Chavez. It's time to re-examine how we teach history in our schools and what is included in those teachings. What can you do to help? Students, ask your teachers to allow you to celebrate Cesar Chavez through the arts. Teachers, 
Include the life and legacy of Cesar Chavez in your lesson plans. Parents, be more active by insisting that Cesar be included in your child's classroom and curriculum. And school administrators, listen and act upon the recommendations of your students, teachers, and parents. We all have a part to play to make this happen, and I encourage you to do your part to remember and honor Cesar Chavez because it's time. Thank you. We want to thank our community leaders for providing reflections. Now coming to the stage is today's presenting sponsor, Bader Philanthropies Incorporated. Hi, my name is Bridget Gonzalez and I'm a program officer at Bader Philanthropies. Community, it is more than just a theme, but a timely call to action to follow in the footsteps of courageous leaders like Cesar Chavez. By sharing his story, we are honoring elders who organize neighborhoods and passionate people from throughout our community to give voice to the struggles of others, all in an effort to preserve the quality and dignity of human life. Today, we are bearing witness to the talented young people who are utilizing art, spoken word, and profound essays to recount the life of Cesar Chavez. What a fitting time to celebrate the trailblazers who came before us and delight in the hope of our youth and future leaders. Thank you to the Marcus Center for the Performing Arts for providing unique and creative opportunities for our young people to blend the sharing of our history and present day life. Congratulations to all the students who participated in this year's event honoring Cesar Chavez. Well, thank you, Bridget and Bader Philanthropies, Inc., for all that you do and continue to do for our community. And now we're in for a special treat, a performance by our very own Latino Strings. Wow, that was amazing. We want to thank all of the contest winners for your presence here today and for demonstrating your unique artist and leadership abilities and insights. All essay, spoken word, and artist contest winners will receive a plaque and gift cards after today's event. Pickup locations for these materials will be provided after the program. Thank you to all the contest students for your leadership and presence here today. And many thanks to our sponsors, Bader Philanthropies, Inc., CBS 58, Telemundo, Wisconsin, the Milwaukee County Transit System, Educators Credit Union, and El Conquistador Latino Newspaper. Please join me in thanking these organizations for their generous contributions to support our youth. And thank you so much for coming today. We really look forward to seeing you in person at the Marcus Performing Arts Center for this event next year.